all your hosts, and we are so glad that you have joined us on Friday night. I want to start the program a little different tonight. We've got a lot of young people that are graduating, some already. I was talking to Angela earlier in the evening. She was showing me someone in her family that's already graduated, and I remember many years ago, and, and I don't know if Doug is watching tonight, but I remember Doug Huntley, Dr. Doug Huntley. He lives in Hendersonville now. When he graduated, I spoke at his at the services there, and, and I sang this song. But I thought about you that are graduating this year. You need to dream. You need to dream big and put God in your life. And, and I know with the help of the Lord, he'll help you fulfill all your dreams. So these are for all you that are graduating from high school, from college, from universities, whatever. Dream big. And in this song, I want to do it for you tonight. Amen. Don't give up your dreams. Don't turn loose of your vision. It's not over yet, my friend. What God is planning for you. So what I'm saying, don't give up your dream. Don't turn loose of your vision. It's not over yet, my friend. What God is planning for you. for all you that are graduating. Isaiah 40, 31, one of very Wade's favorite scriptures says this, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew
is that you need tonight, my friend. Oh, and you are more than enough. More than enough. You are El Shaddai, the God, the God of plenty. than anything I want to please the Lord I want to do I want to go I want to be obedient to the things he had us has us to do in this time and the Lord's using us to travel and evangelize in the area of healings I'm so I'm so glad I'm so excited for what we're seeing in this day we're living in Mike Murdoch wrote a song that I love pretty much says what we want to do to spend my life mending broken people I want to spend my life moving pain Lord let we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts we've come with our best praise in this house tonight you are worthy you are holy oh we magnify you we glorify you this night in Jesus name hallelujah we give you praise Lord I want us to go to way now at this time day and what a privilege it is to be here with you and as always isn't it good to start out praising and worshiping the most high God and that's what it's all about every morning we uh, rise up we ought to be praising him and thanking him for a new day why because it's the day the Lord hath made and we can rejoice and be glad in it 
Well, once again, thank you for being with us. And I want to say right up front, our prayer partners are here tonight. They come so faithfully each night to take your calls and whatever need you may have. Uh, it could be spiritual, financial, physical, whatever it is. Give us a call and let us join our faith with yours in lifting that e need up before the Father. And as always, Gwen likes good praise reports. So if God's done something wonderful for you this week or your family member or somebody, give us a call and give that uh, praise report that we can share and encourage others. Gwen, it's good to be here. It certainly is. It's been a few weeks since we've been down, and we are so glad to be back with our Nightline family. I've had several calls today, and, mm -hmm. and, and some of the requests I didn't get filled tonight, but I promise you I'll make them up. Miss Betty, Miss Rosie, if you're watching tonight, I just want you to know we love you all, and we're praying for you, and I'll try to do some special songs maybe next week for you. Uh, we've got a special, very special guest in the house tonight that I'm going to be introducing in just a moment, but we don't want you to take some time and just expound on the scripture tonight. Uh, scripture tonight is uh, James 4, 7, and 8, and it reads like this. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, and I love that first part Me of too. it, and and it says, resist the devil, Gwen, and he will flee from you. And then eight, draw nigh to the Lord, and he will draw nigh to you. And what I like is the beginning. Submit yourself, you know, to God. Because, you know, that's the key right there on in our lives each and every day. We, we should be submissive unto the Father. Because, you know, when we submit ourselves to him, what we're doing is saying, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. And that's what I want in my life, and I'm sure that's what you want in yours is His will in your life. So when we submit ourselves to Him, say, Lord, have your way. And Gwen, when He takes over, no matter what we're facing, what we may be going through, that devil has to flee. He does have to flee. We have to, when we stand upon that word, infallible word of God, then you know, where else can you find the strength? Where else can you find the peace? Where else can you find the comfort? Where else can you find all that you need except in His Holy Word? Did you ever play that game, way tug of war? Oh, yes. You know, where somebody had a rope on this end, mm -hmm. and then there was other people had a rope on the other end. You were pulling as hard as you could. and It was kind of like I've seen just in the spirit realm, like, you know, that the Lord really is yearning. The Holy Spirit is yearning and tugging their hearts. But at the same time, it's just like the enemy is on the other end, way, just pulling as hard as he as he can and, and what you said tonight is a key word submit that's it and if we'll submit that means that you've got to surrender everything you know you've got to lay it all down and there may be times in our lives and I think we've both been there when we can't fix all everything no no it just we'll make a mess of things when we start trying <laughs> to fix it without him you know we're just we're just laying it out for you tonight sometimes there's things that we face and we just have to give to God we have to just lay it at the cross, the foot of the cross, and say, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you. We just trust you. In Proverbs, it talks about trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not your own understanding. And, and, and we know, we know the greatest battlefield is right there in the mind. Is of the mind. And so you just have to say, God, we, we lay it down. We submit ourselves. It's more than just saying it. That's it. You know, and I like the uh, eight, draw nigh unto him and he'll draw nigh unto yes. us. And, you know, that's where I want to be with him. Absolutely. Uh, like Psalm 5, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, you know, shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. Where else would you want to be except right there under his shelter and arms, you know, right there where he can be there to be that present help in time of need. But, you know, so many times we get called up, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need that. When we need to spend a lot of time saying, Lord, I praise you. I yes. thank you yes. for all that you've done for me. You know, he's done so much for you and I, brother and sister. We just need to stop and look around. I, I remember my mind went back to as a young lad uh, growing up. As a young teen, I'd start complaining about things, even seven, eight, nine years old. And as I started to complain about things, I never will forget. My father would say, son, look around. Yeah. Son, look around. And, you know, it took a while, but when I, like I say, when I hit my early teens, I realized what he was saying. 
look around and look at all that you've really got to be thankful mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. We take things for granted sometimes. Oh, we do. I, and you was talking a while ago about, you know, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. And sometimes we run from God instead of running to him. And I, was, I know. We have, we, all of our kids are grown. We have six kids and 19 grandkids and one little precious great-granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, but we have a little dog at home, Duchess. Duchess is nine years old plus. And so uh, when the storm comes or she hears thunder, the first thing she wants to do is either jump in mama's lap or daddy's lap. You know, she wants to hide. She doesn't like the thunder. And, you know, sometimes that's how we, you know, we are with the Lord when we're going through things. Instead of running from or going and hiding behind something, we just need to run straight to him, Wade. That's right. You know, what a wonderful scripture. That's tonight. it. I have to go back. I thought of something when you were talking about tug of war. <laughs> there were times when we were kids and uh, we'd have our tug of war. Uh, I, I and my friends were kind of bad to the one on the back of our group. If we could, we'd have extra rope, and we'd sl he'd slip back there and tie it around a tree no. so that they couldn't pull so much. But, you know, I got to thinking, you know, if I'm going to tie on to something, I want to tie on to the Word of God. Amen. You That's talk good. about You talk about an anchor. <laughs> That anchor will hold. You got that right. <laughs> Which I love that song. I have to tell you just a little bit about our guest. We are so blessed, Wade, aren't we, to have a wonderful guest from Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, now, are you sure about that? Did I say it because right? Because I got a feeling that uh, our guest might be from, oh, a little over, maybe 2,000 years maybe, ago. Maybe, maybe. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, all of a sudden <laughs> he's here. You're in for a treat tonight. This was just a God thing that it happened, and he's he's very. I'm so excited about having him here tonight. His name is Dennis Cole. He is the no. founder, director, producer. I mean, he just has such a gift. Would you call it a gift he has from the Lord? And he does drama, and uh, he is here tonight. He's going to share. He's going to minister, and then we're going to bring him over and talk to him a little later in the program. But this first hour, he is he's here. James is here. He's going to do the book of James. So would you make welcome tonight, Dennis Cole, for Trayin' James. Shalom. I am James. Yaakov. I am a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus, our Messiah. And to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, Greetings, shalom, shalom. Consider it, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever any one of you faces trials of many kinds. Because you know it is the, it's the testing of your faith that develops perseverance. Perseverance must, must finish its work so that you can be mature, complete, perfect not lacking in any, anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, he, he, she should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. It'll be given to him. But when he asks, when he asks, he must believe, not doubt. Because one who, 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 who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person shouldn't think he'll receive anything from the Lord because he's double-minded. He's unstable in all that he does. So, so, let the lowly brother, let him glory in his exaltation. But the one who's rich in his humiliation, because the rich man is going to fade away like a wild flower. The sun rises with a scorching heat, it withers the plant, the blossom falls, and the beauty is destroyed. And so too will the rich man Fade away, even while he goes about his pursuits. But, but blessed is the man, the woman who, who, who endures under trial. Because when he's finished the test, he's going to receive the, the crown of life that, that God has promised to those who love him. But when tempted, when tempted, he should not say, do you know, God is tempting me because God, God can't be tempted by evil, nor does God tempt anyone. 
But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lusts. And then when desire conceives, it gives birth to sin. Sin, when it's full grown, it gives birth to death. So, so don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters, because every good and perfect gift, it comes from above. It comes down from the Father of the heavenly lights who doesn't change like shifting shadows. But by his own will, he chose to make us a kind of first fruits of all he's created. Brothers, sisters, I want you to take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, because mankind's anger doesn't bring about the righteous life that God desires. So, therefore, get rid of moral filth. And the evil that's so prevalent. And humbly, humbly accept the word. The word planted in you. Which can save you. Amen. Most of you will say amen. And I'm going to show you what I want to say. Here it's Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. Genesis, Genesis, yeah, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Leviticus. Do, 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 Judges. Second Samuel. Do, 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 do. Wow. Job. Job. Psalms. P S A L M. Isaiah. Isaiah. Jeremiah. And the New Testament, Matthew, and on and on. And we're almost through, we're almost through, and over. Listen to me. Don't just hear the word and then deceive yourself. Do what it says. You see, anyone who, who reads the word only but doesn't doesn't do what it says. It's like a man who, who looks at his own face in a mirror. You see, he looks at his own face in the mirror, and immediately when he walks away, He forgets who, who he was. What? But the one who looks intently into Emmanuel, the perfect law, the perfect Torah that gives freedom and, and continues to do this, not forgetting what he's heard, but doing it. He, she will be blessed in what they do. Now, if anybody thinks that they're religious, and they can't keep a tight rein on their tongue. Well, that person's religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father considers pure and faultless. It's this. It's, it's to look after orphans and, and widows in their trouble. And, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Brothers, sisters, as believers, believers. Raise your hand if you're a believer. As believers in our, in our glorious Lord Jesus, our Messiah, don't show favoritism. Suppose someone comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes. Ooh, ooh, ho, 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 ho. You know, we're just alike, aren't we? We, we look alike. We think alike. We, we just, <laughs> yes, of course, I like <laughs> Fellowshipping, you know. <laughs> of course, you sit right there on the stool. No, you sit there. You, you sit right there. It's a, it's a good seat. And, and, yeah, I'll look right at you, okay? 
good. But then a poor man in filthy clothes, he also walks in and, and, huh? Oh, sit here, sit here, sit here by, by me, okay? Uh, <sighs> now. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yes. Have you not just discriminated among yourselves? Have you not just become judges with evil thoughts? Brothers and sisters, don't you know that God has chosen the poor of the world to be, to be rich in faith and to, and to inherit the kingdom promise to those who love him? But you've insulted the poor. Isn't it the rich who exploit you? Aren't they the ones who drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who, who blaspheme the noble names to whom you say you belong? Now, if you keep the royal law found in Scripture, you love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show favoritism, <laughs> you, you become the transgressor. For he who said, thou shalt not commit adultery, he also said, thou shalt not murder. Well, if you don't commit adultery, but you, <laughs> you commit murder. You become the transgressor of the law, Torah. So, so, so speak and, and act as one who's going to be judged by the law, the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who's not been merciful. I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see, brothers and sisters, mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, brothers and sisters? If a man claims to have faith, but he doesn't have acts, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or daily food, and one of you says to him, oh, you don't have clothes, you don't have food, oh, we'll be warm, be well fed, in Jesus' name. But he does nothing about their physical needs. What good is that faith? In the same way, faith, unless it's accompanied with, with, with works, acts, it's dead. Oh, but somebody will say, oh, Yaakov, James, you, you, you've got faith. I've, I've, got, I've got works. You show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by what I do. Do you believe there's one God? Good. Very good. And so do the demons. You foolish people, do you want evidence that, that faith without works is dead? Faith without acts. Well, wasn't our father Abraham, wasn't he considered righteous when he offered his son Isaac at the altar? You, you see, his faith and his acts, they were working together. And his faith was made perfect by what he did. And then scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see, one's justified by what one, what one does and not by faith alone. Or take Rahab. Rahab was considered a harlot. She was. But wasn't she considered righteous when she offered, when she offered lodging for the spies? And then by faith, she sent them off in another direction. Brothers and sisters, as the body, 
without Ruach, without the Spirit, it's, it's, it's dead. So also faith without, without acts is also dead. Man, you're so good at having you here tonight. Wade Meyer was so glad. Thank you. I am honored. Privilege. I am honored yes, to be here. Yes, absolutely. I wouldn't be here except that you invited me. And it's really you? Well, the only you that you ever know about me is from the Holy Spirit. He wrote the book, and he's continuing to write the book without changing one word. With new, with new nuances and understandings. And that's why you're able to come forward 2,000 years into the wow. today. Well, it's not that complicated. You, anytime you open your heart to the Holy Spirit, to Emmanuel, the Bible, Emmanuel, not the Emmanuel, you, 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 you engage. This is, this, is the new, this is the new Reformation. <laughs> we, in heaven, we call it the new Reformation that's available in, in, your, in your time. It's, it's, it's the new way of understanding the Bible. It's... It's God interacting with us. Of and course, you've invited me. Of course, I'm here. And you're so alive with the Word. <laughs> I'm having a good time, too. Yes. <laughs> but you sing different. beautifully, by the way, Gwen. Thank you so much. Yes. How different is today? Okay. I don't get that compliment or clap. <laughs> but how different is it today? You just got it. <laughs> and yesterday, from from when you first was bringing the word forth. Okay, you're asking me, what's the difference between uh, 2,000 years ago when, and today. when the Holy Spirit broke me and he, and he put his word into me onto the pages of what we call scripture? And uh, what's the difference? Well, some things are completely the same. Some things are even, 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 even more so in your time. I, I would say that the real trials that we had in our time you're having in your time even more. The reality of a world that needs a Messiah, that needs the Messiah, and people deliberately walking away from way down deep they know better. That is happening in your time even more than our time. Evil is running its course. So is good, too, by the way. Like yourself as the word comes forth. Well, the best wine is saved for the end, and when people want God, as much as we need God, we have personal revival. It's, it's, it's available today, but it's, it's not in the culture. And that's the big the, the similarity between your time and our. It wasn't in the culture in our time either. But it's, it's not in the culture. You're not going to find uh, the, the living God in the mainstream media. But you're going to find him in the good news. But if your good news is strictly, well, never had a bad day, never had a trial, never had anything wrong, everything, then you'll miss the good news. So we need to seek and seek in the right place. We need to see the problems that are happening as they are. So find the solution. The solution is thereby facing the trials, going through the trials. You, you have joy in the trials because you, you choose to, but the circumstance doesn't dictate it, but you want it because you know not only that the joy of the Lord is my strength, but that God is with me because I'm with God. Yes. And you face the problem, and then you, you find the solution. And then you find applications, the acts of the Holy Spirit. I was just thinking today, you know, that scripture says, count it all joy. And sometimes it, you don't feel very joyous. <laughs> oh, of course. You, yes, that's, that's human. Yeah. Yes. But you've been through it before. You've yes. been through it before. Yes. You've been there before. This time, this time, go through it with the Lord as he is. As he is. Find him in your own acts. Mm -hmm. You see, in your time, people uh, theorize. It's a very theoretical time. You, 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 you say the word, and then you theorize it, and you think you've got it. Mm -hmm. But in our time, and in the time that you live in, essentially, in God's time and in your time today, it needs to be acted out. It needs to be not performed, but given away, brought to life. It needs to be, the word for compassion means inside skin. It needs to... Look at other people. See what they're going through. See what you're going through. The word they has been the biggest problem in your time. They, they, they. It's us. When the Lord uh, was addressing all these people that didn't have the Holy Spirit, and he said, our Father. He said, our Father. The people didn't even know who, who the Holy Spirit was. He didn't have God, didn't have a relationship. He says, our Father. Mm -hmm. He's our Father. And for those who know him personally, what a blessing. Yes. And those who know him, 
or want to know him or could know him, we need to drop our guard and just slip in and walk. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. Let it happen. Drop the mask. Ooh, let it go. Find that joy in the midst of the storm. In the midst of it, by going through it. That's real faith. That's it. That's Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Faith without Acts. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. That's the fifth book, right, of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And he said the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength, strength, and we're going through it. And let's yes. find partners to go through it with. Let's suffer together and let's rejoice together. And pray one for another like never before because you need it, I need it, she needs it. We all need it. it, yes. Well, do you want me to continue my epistle? Yes. By all means. Well, thank you. Anytime there's a desire, Emmanuel happens. You, you know, you, you shouldn't presume to be teachers, my brothers and sisters, because, you know, we who teach are going to be judged much more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anybody's perfect in what he says, he is able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, well, we could turn the whole animal. Or take ships as another example. Though they're very large and they're driven by fierce winds, they're guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the captain wants to go. Well, well, the tongue, it's also a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest that's set on fire by a small spark. Well, the tongue, it's also a fire. And it is a world of evil among the parts of the body, and it corrupts the whole person. And it sets the whole course of his life on fire. And is itself set on fire from hell. All the animals, the birds of the air, the creatures of the sea, they're being tamed by man, or are, are, are being tamed, or have been tamed, but no one can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil. It's full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise God. And with that same tongue, we curse people who made in his likeness. And the same outcome, praises and curses. Brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can salt water flow from a freshwater pond? Sisters, can, can, can figs come from an olive tree? Brothers, can, can olives come from... A grapevine. And neither can a salt water spring produce fresh water. So, so who is it that's wise? Who is it that's understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life. Let him show it by, by, <laughs> by meekness, which, which comes from wisdom. But if he harbors in his heart, Bitter envy and self-seeking. Well, let him not boast about it. Let him not deny the truth because such boasting, it, it's evil. Oh, it's, it's wisdom, but it, it doesn't come from heaven. It's, it's earthly. It's, it's sensual. It is demonic. For wherever you find self-seeking and uh, uh, selfish ambition, that's where you find disorder, confusion, and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from above, oh, first of all, it's pure. <laughs> then it's peace-loving. It's, it's, it's full of mercy. It's full of good fruit. It's, it's submissive. It's without favoritism. It's without hypocrisy. Peacemakers who who make peace, raise up a harvest of righteousness. What is it that causes fights and quarrels among you? The 
does it not come from the desires that battle within you? You want something, but you can't have it. You kill, you, you covet, but you, you can't get what you want. You fight, you quarrel, but you don't have. You don't have. You don't have because you don't ask God. And when you do ask, you don't receive. You don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. <laughs> Yes, so you can get what you want for your pleasures. You are adulterous people. Don't you know? Don't you know that that friendship with the world is is it's, it's enmity toward God. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes God's enemy. Or do you think Scripture says, without reason, that the Spirit He causes to indwell, He yearns jealously for? The spirit that indwells the believer. But God gives more grace. And that's why scripture says God opposes the proud. But he, he gives grace to the humble. So, so submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and flee from you. Draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Sinners. Purify your hearts. You double-minded, weep. Mourn. Yes. Wail. <laughs> to turn your laughter into mourning. Turn your, 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 your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves and oh, humble yourselves in, in the sight of the Lord. And, and he, he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not speak evil about one another. Anybody who speaks evil of his brother or judges his sister speaks evil of Torah. It actually judges the law. When you judge your brother, you judge the law. There's only one lawgiver, there's only one judge. So who are you to judge one another? Now listen, listen to me. You who say today or tomorrow we're going to go to the city. We're going to go to that city. Oh, we're going to carry on business. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to make money. We're going to, we're going to, for the Lord. Please, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a vapor. And you appear for a little while, and then you disappear. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wills, we will live. And, and we'll do this and we'll do that. But as it is, you boast, you brag, all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the, the good that he ought to do and, and doesn't do it, he, she sins. Now listen, rich people, yes, weep and howl because the misery that is coming upon you, your wealth is rotted. Moths have eaten your clothes. Your silver and gold, it's, it's, it's corroded and it's corrosion. It's testifying against you. Look, look at the wages you failed to pay the workmen who plowed your fields. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence, and then you've fatted yourselves. In the day of slaughter. You, you have judged. And you have. You've murdered. The innocent one. Who wasn't opposing you. 
so. So be patient then, brothers and sisters. Be long-suffering. How long? Until the Lord comes. You see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop? You see how he waits for the early and the latter rains? You too wait. Be patient and stand firm and strengthen your heart. The Lord's coming is very near. You know how we consider blessed those who have waited patiently in the name of the Lord in the face of of suffering. You've heard of the prophets. You've heard of Job's perseverance. You've seen what the Lord finally brought about with Job. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, brothers and sisters, don't swear. By anything, not by heaven, not by the earth. Don't grudge one another and don't swear. Let your yes be yes and your no, no, or you're going to be condemned. Is any one of you suffering? You. Are you suffering? The Lord learned obedience from the things he suffered. Are you suffering? Pray. Listen, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and I am with you. Is anybody happy? Are you happy? Raise your hands if you're happy. Sing a song of praise, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Sing, sing. Sing off key. Sing. Is anybody suffering? You should call for the elders of the church to anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will make the sick person well. If he, she has sinned, he, she will be forgiven. So confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The fervent prayer of a righteous man, woman, availeth much. It does so much good. You know, Elijah, he was a human being. He, he was a man, and he was just like us. And Elijah prayed. He prayed that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And then again, he, he prayed And the heavens gave forth its rain, and the earth, it, it, it produced its crops. Brothers and sisters, if any one of you should, should wander from the truth, and, and then someone should bring him back, bring her back, will you remember this? Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way He saves his, his soul from death. And he covers a multitude of sins. Shalom, Mishpokah. Family. When we suffer together, we rejoice together. When we take off our our masks, whatever they are, and just drop our guard. We find the fellowship that is promised in these very last days. For the best wine is saved for the new wineskin, and the new wineskin is the new fellowship. Out of need and want and coming together often, one on one, two on three, husbands and wives, children, Come together because there's no other way for such a time as this. This is the day. This is the season. And this is the time for the new relationship with Emmanuel, the Bible. God with us and us relating with God who so desperately loves to relate with us. Shalom, my friends.
till we meet again. Till we meet again. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Amen. The book of James tonight. Dennis Cole Ministries. Wade, we're so glad to have him here. He makes his home in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Tell me what that did for you tonight, just hearing every bit of that. You know, I mentioned earlier that it seemed like there's such an anointing yes. as he portrayed yes. James and come forth that the word, well, he mentioned in the beginning, as James said, you know, not just read it, not that it's just there, but it's got to come alive within us. Mm -hmm. And as he spoke tonight, such a feeling. Uh, there's a couple times there, literally, I got some chills on me. Uh, you know, God's word is awesome. And did he ever hit on so many things that's pertinent to the world today that we're living in, that we're walking in? Yes. And God gave that word in such a way, you know, that we could feed on it today, Gwen, mm -hmm. and and grow from it. I, I enjoyed what he said right there at the beginning. He mentioned families get together, one to another, families, friends, whatever. Yes, yes. You know, if there was ever a time to surround ourselves with the Word, with our loved ones, with others, you know, it's now. So much wisdom in the book of James. Yes, there is. And, you know, we need to take this, apply it to our lives, yes. walk and live. You know, God's Word is life. Mm -hmm. And it means so much, you know, that, that we can take, and what I like about it, we can take where James spoke 2,000 or 2,000 years ago, bring it forth to today, and it's so powerful because it's not his words, as per se. It was God giving the words through him yes. for you and I for today. Mm -hmm. We need to take it and feed on it. It was like, you know, when we joined him over there for just a little while, it was just like we'd, we'd gone back in that time with him. I but know actually, he had come. He yeah. stepped forward to I our know, time. I know. And that's what's the amazing <laughs> thing about God's word. Yeah. He's the same yesterday today and forevermore and how it had changed from that day to where we're at right now wade think about that god's foundation yes is his word for us to stand upon mm -hmm. and again he's the same yesterday today and forevermore those words apply to you and i brother and sister. yes they do they apply to us today and what do we do with it that's up to us the choices we make how we handle his word. If there was ever a time we need to spend more time in his word, uh, in, in fellowship with the Lord by prayer, it's now. Yeah. It's now. I, I encourage those that are watching. I mean, I've, we felt a real need for prayer, mm -hmm. you know, and um, even watching Channel 16 through the day, I've seen where different ones are just encouraging, especially for our nation, Wade. That's right. For our nation right now, you can we talk about the sign of the times. If you look around at some of the things that are happening right now in our nations with mm -hmm. the, the devastations in, in Texas, the floodings and some and famine. I mean, there's all kind of things around us happening. And I believe, this is what I believe, and I believe Wade will agree with me, that it's going to take prayer. Well, I don't have time. But there may become a time Better when you time. wish you had prayer, Better take had time. prayed, and, 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 you know, just not for your four no more. I mean, we need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our countries. We need to pray for those in authority over us, with us. It's so important in this day and time that we realize that and, and really catch hold of it. That's right. And you mentioned prayer. You're talking about prayer. I want to encourage you that are watching tonight right yes. now. Yes. Our prayer partners are here. They're yes. on these phones back there uh, taking your calls. You know, if you've got a need, your family, your children, your loved ones, your friends, whatever, get on the phone right now and give us a call. 
let, uh, let us get the prayer requests out here. We're going to do that in the uh, next half hour, the last half hour tonight. And we want to pray over those requests. Yes. But we're call in. Let our prayer partners pray with you. Write down those requests, and they'll get them out here to us. And we're going to take time to pray over them. Why? Because we care. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know that there is a living God that will respond to your need. As the scripture says, draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. And many times it's in times of need that we really draw nigh unto him. That's right, right Wade. And in that passage of scripture in James that I love, it says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. He hears you when you pray. That's right. He does. He doesn't turn a deaf ear. He's ever present with us. And so whatever it is, and we're going to pray tonight in a little while. And there's so many urgent requests. But like Wade said, go to, the, go to the phones right now. There will be somebody that will pick up the phone, talk with you, pray with you, encourage you. You might just need encouragement tonight. There will be somebody that will do that with you tonight. In Jesus' name. This first hour is coming gone. But uh, the last the, half hour is going to be great. Powerful. Oh. Dennis is going to come over and join you and I right. and share about his life. And I'll tell you, we're so blessed to have him here with us tonight. And just count it a joy. Count it That's a right. joy. I want to hear from you tonight. I know you've been ministered to because we have. In Jesus' name. So stay with us. We'll be right back for the second half hour of Nightline.